Well, you know, when uh, the election was over in 2020, I decided to retire uh, since I failed retirement the first time. But after a few weeks, seeing the direction that things were taking, we said we got to do something. And there were several really spectacular people at HUD, and we decided we would create a think tank slash do tank uh, that was based on the founding principles of our nation, faith, community, liberty, and life. And um, we've been doing things around the country uh, to try to remind people of what those uh, values are, including our Little Patriots program, uh, which is a counterbalance to things like critical race theory, giving kids the real history of our country, warts and all, but uh, it is really a history to be extremely proud of. You know, for instance, you know, when it comes to the issue of slavery, uh, the left would have you believe that somehow the United States is uniquely evil when slavery has been a part of every society since there have been societies. The thing that's unique about us is that we had so many people who were against it that we were willing to fight a civil war and lose a large portion of our population in doing so. And that's what we should be teaching our children. And, uh, and then we're also having the More Perfect Union uh, project, uh, helping people to realize what our founding was about what our founding documents are, why we have a constitution, why it was created. The constitution was actually created as a tool for the people of the United States to be able to control government because our founders knew that the natural tendency of government is to expand, to infiltrate, and to control. And unless you have something to keep that from happening, uh, that will always be the case. Uh, we're being challenged a little bit right now, but you know, this is where hopefully our Supreme Court and eventually some brave legislators will, will look at our Constitution and make sure that we adhere to it. If we do, uh, it'll be smooth sailing. If we don't, it's going to be pretty rocky. What factor in your decision to come out here today for the state of the state and writ large to work with Governor Nome on some critical race theory legislation? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Governor Nome is one of the heroes uh, when it comes to governors uh, because she's courageous and has recognized the real role of government, which is to facilitate life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, not to dominate people. And sh recognizing that the citizens themselves actually are not stupid. Um, you know, they know what's best for them if you will allow them to do it and assist them in the process. And we really need to start thinking that same way on a national level. And anything that can be done to sort of highlight what's going on in a state like South Dakota, uh, I think is something that we really need to do. The rest of the nation really needs to take notice. It's not a coincidence that South Dakota is doing very well, even in the face of COVID. It is a direct result of the actions that have been taken here, and people need to take note of that. In regards to banning critical race theory or preventing the teaching of critical race theory, what is kind of the legislative formula, in your opinion? You know, critics would say that it's either going to be too broad in scope or it's going to be too specific. How do you balance academic freedom versus preventing the teaching of critical race theory? Well, I balance it by saying teach the truth. You know, uh, you don't need to have an agenda. Just tell people what actually happened. Uh, were there some things that were unsavory in our past? Absolutely. Why? Because we're inhabited by human beings, and human beings are not perfect. So they're never always going to be perfect in what they do. The question is, can you learn from those things? When we teach history, we should teach it with an eye toward what lessons are there to be learned here? And how do we uh, keep ourselves from repeating the same kinds of mistakes that have been uh, made in the past? Uh, you know, that's what education really is about. That's what wisdom is about. Wise people are people who can learn from other people's triumphs and their mistakes. Stupid people are the ones who have to keep making the same mistake over and over again. Have you looked at the governor's critical race theory 
bill? And what do you like about it, or what stands out to you? Well, I like the fact that it's encouraging uh, people to look at the things that are positive and really trying to get rid of the things that divide people, that cause hatred, uh, that cause separ separation. And, uh, you know, we're called the United States of America, not the divided States of America. And I think her bill and her emphasis is on that unity. That's what gives us strength. That's what allowed us to go from a bunch of ragtag militiamen to the pinnacle of the world in record time. That too was not an accident. That was because of a certain philosophy that we grasped, a certain understanding that we had. And it also had to do with the fact that faith was an important part of who we are as a nation. Uh, you know, every coin in our pocket, every bill in our wallet says, in God we trust. Our pledge says we are one nation under God. Godly principles of loving your neighbor, caring about your fellow man, developing your God-given talents to the utmost, having values and principles that, go that govern your life. Those are strong principles that took us to the pinnacle of the world. And uh, as we move away from those, you'll see that we're deteriorating. And it's not too late for us to make a course correction. And I think the things that are going on in this state, uh, Florida, a few other places, really, I think will help us get back on the right track.